And welcome sports fans to today's roundtable and it's on this April 26th coming down to the end of the sports year. We've only got a few more weeks remaining in the sports season here for 2013 and 2014 and we've got a few more roundtables left for you before we end our season for this school year and we're going to take the summer off, be back in late August, early September right around there for the fall sports so still got a few more shows remaining but uh, the show is winding down as, as well as the school year for this 2014. So we still got some spring sports to follow for the remainder of the way and keeping you up to date on all the top stories from the area in high school athletics. So uh, a lot still more to talk about as we get into the spring sports, getting into district play pretty soon. We're seeing some conference tournaments play out throughout the area as well. So still quite a bit to report on going forward for the end of this 2014 school year. I'm glad you joined us here on the Sports Roundtable. And you can tune in each Saturday morning live at 10 a.m., replaying over the weekend, and even uh, watch it on demand on SeamallSportsZone.com and also YHCTV.com. So glad you joined us this morning. We're going to talk about the spring sports coming up in just a moment. Also, we've got some All-State basketball teams to report on that were released this week. And we'll talk about those and also some baseball state rankings. And we're going to have our good friend Tommy Jacobs along with us to talk about some uh, stories in the area that's developed over the past week. So, got quite a bit to do for today's show. And let's go right into the results from the past few days in spring sports. And taking a look at those games uh, yesterday Kennett got a win over Gosnell Arkansas 5-2 to two. and Kennett playing a lot stronger here in the last few weeks in the season they've really come on strong here of late so uh, one team to look out look for later on in this season going into district play are the Kennett Indians and also Poplar Bluff continuing their unbeaten streak undefeated season so far this year over Twin Rivers decisively 10 to nothing Quite a season the Papa Bluff Mules have put together so far this year. And also we have South Pemiscot over Blyville, Arkansas, 10 to nothing. Notre Dame over Oran, 7 to nothing. Portageville over Chaffee, very impressive win for the Portageville Bulldogs, 5 to 4. They've had a great season so far. And Chaffee, a very good team as well, ranked number one in Class 2 in the state of Missouri. Very impressive victory for the Portageville Bulldogs. And also we have Cooter over Seneth Hornersville by a score of 5-1. Malden over Campbell, handily 15-2. Bernie over Bloomfield. This is going back, I think, to uh, Wednesday. And that was the Stoddard County Activities Association Championship. Bernie defeated Bloomfield in a shutout 9-0. Bernie's got a... Has had a great run over the last week. Last weekend, they won the Malden Invitational Baseball Tournament, and they got four victories in that tournament. Went 4-0 and uh, swept the Stoddard County Tournament as well. So it's been a very good week for the Bernie Mules baseball team. And also, a few days ago in softball, or actually yesterday in softball, it was Kennett over South Pemiscot decisively. It's 26-1. And also, Hawkham over Zenith Hornersville, 5-4 to four in a close one. And Twin Rivers over Bernie a few days ago, 8-7. to seven. And Bernie over Woodland, 15-5 to five earlier in the week. Twin Rivers over Greenville, 13-10. to 10. And also, East Carter County over Naylor out west, 11-8. And those are the spring sports to report on from this past week. And uh, very, very impressive games, as you see there. Seen some teams really uh, start to peak this time of the year. It's, it's hard to peak out when you're you know, only about six or seven weeks into the season, but still yet uh, shorter, uh, certainly a shorter season for the spring sports. But we're seeing teams start to play to their potential here at the later, latter part of April. And we're going to take a quick break and be back with some baseball state rankings. And also we're going to try to uh, come up with some other results from the area this past week as well. So we're going to take a break and be back with that coming up. 
Welcome to NFL Total Access. The show that takes you inside the locker room and down on the field. With inside access to all 32 teams all year long. NFL Total Access, Monday through Saturday, only on NFL Network. NFL Network, where football season never ends. I chose Three Rivers College. Caring staff made it easy to enroll. I'm receiving affordable, quality college classes. Day, evening, and online classes let me work college into my schedule. With locations throughout Southeast Missouri and over 200 course offerings, including online courses, Three Rivers can help you earn a college or career technical degree. I chose Three Rivers College. You should too. Enroll today. Learn more at trcc.edu. Three Rivers College. Success starts here. First Midwest Bank Gold Club offers special privileges for our friends who are age 50 or better and have combined deposits of $5,000. Members enjoy trips, cruises, seminars, and picnics along with free personalized bank services. Upcoming trips include Journey Through the Holy Land, Yellowstone in Winter, Classic Ireland, and Hawaiian Paradise Cruise. Stop by any First Midwest Bank location to sign up for the Gold Club. It's absolutely free. First Midwest Bank, providing common sense financial solutions every day. And we're back, and before we get into the baseball state rankings, I want to touch on a few games that uh, we left there off the scores. Uh, some important games earlier this week in the Stoddard County Activities Association Softball Championship. It was the Advanced Lady Hornets defeating Woodland in that title game, and that was 9-1. to one. Uh, The Advanced Lady Hornets come away with this year's Stoddard County Tournament Championship, and it was Bernie defeating Dexter in the third-place game. 14-4, Bernie winning third place in the Stoddard County Tournament this year. So those are the games I wanted to, to touch on before we moved on to our segment. And also we had the SEMO Conference Golf Tournament earlier in the week I wanted to, to touch on as well. In the large schools uh, division, it was Notre Dame winning. Second place was Jackson. Third place, Poplar Bluff. Fourth, Sykeston. And fifth, Cape Central. And sixth, Dexter. Those were the large schools standings for that SEMO conference uh, golf tournament earlier this week and for the small schools it was Donovan in first place second Kelly third Crothersville fourth Malden and fifth Saxony Lutheran so we want to touch on those uh, important matchups that took place earlier on this week as well and let's move on to the baseball state rankings. And these rankings are released every two weeks by the Missouri High School Baseball Coaches Association. And uh, this is the second week of these rankings, so we'll have a new poll next week. And in Class 1, Cairo is still at number 1. 2, New Franklin. 3, Oran. 4, Santa Fe. 5, Daveville. 6, Atlanta. 7, Sturgeon. 8, Tuscumbia. 9, Leopold. And 10, Woblu. And we've got... Uh, Oran and Leopold still there in the top 10 in Class 1. And in Class 2, Chaffee on top at number 1. Uh, there in Class 2, 2 Valley Catholic, 3 Hartville, 4 Neelyville, 5 Sacred Heart, 6 East Carter County, 7 Thayer, 8 Holcomb, 9 Canton, and 10 Skyline. And quite a few teams there from Southeast Missouri in those rankings in Class 2. As you see there, Chaffee, Valley Catholic, Newleyville, East Carter County, Thayer, and Holcomb, and we might even see Portageville get in there in the mix this next week with their very impressive victory over Chaffee. So uh, Portageville might be there in the mix as well. And what a Class 2, certainly a couple of district tournaments here in the area and even into the sectional round of the state tournament. It's going to be very competitive there in Class 2 this year. So certainly going to be fun to watch how that Class 2 plays out this spring. Now moving on to Class 3, Springfield Catholic defending state champions of Class 3. They're at number 1, 2, Forsyth, 3, Cuba, 4, Mountain Grove, 5, Palmyra, 6, Lutheran of St. Charles, 7, Blair Oaks, 8, Conway, 9, Blue Eye Christian of O'Fallon, and 10, Sherwood. In Class 4, Westminster Christian at number 1, 
Two, Notre Dame out of Cape Girardeau. Three, Logan Rogersville. Four, Sykeston. Five, Lutheran South. Six, Smithville. Seven, Boonville. Eight, Pembroke Hill. Nine, Oak Grove. And ten, Marshfield. And moving on to Class 5, Francis Howell at number 1, 2, Christian Brothers College, 3, Liberty North, 4, Viani, 5, Parkway South, 6, Blue Springs South, 7, Lee Summit West, 8, Rockhurst, 9, Willard, and 10, Neosho. So no Southeast Missouri teams there in Class 5, but we might see Poplar Bluff move in to, there to the top 10 this next week. They're undefeated so far this year, so certainly would make sense for them to be in that top 10 for this next poll as we're getting so close to district time. So we'll see how that uh, coaches poll comes out this next week. And we're going to take another quick break and we've got some uh, <clears throat> all-state basketball teams to report on that was released this week uh, from the Associated Press and we're going to talk about that in our next segment and also bring along Tommy Jacobs, one of our sports contributors here talk about those all-state teams and other developing stories from the area. So we'll be back with that coming up. It's the small things in life that you tend to appreciate. The quality of care at CMO Health Network is no different. They focus on the small details with health care that make you feel good so you can get back to enjoying the small things in no time. They have so many ways to take care of you with eight locations serving rural communities in need of medical care, including dental facilities and an in-house laboratory. You'll feel good about this. CMO Health Network. What is your emergency? Clear! There's a better way to jumpstart your soil back to health. Apply Enzone to protect and increase nitrogen efficiency without killing bacteria. Apply Prevent to increase phosphorus availability and reduce fixation. Better yet, use them both to get more from your fertilizer investment and see higher potential yields. Ag Explorer, your prescription for healthy soil. And we're going to take a look at these All-State basketball teams, and they were released this er earlier this week as we're getting into them now. Cl Class 4, J.T. Jones of Sykeston and Kevontae Mitchell of Kennett, uh, certainly two of the better players that we've seen over the uh, two or three years here in southeast Missouri, making first-team All-State there in Class 4. Now in Class 3, Delfinko Bogan from Charleston, first team, Daryl Monroe, from Crowsville making first team as well, and second team, Willie Jefferson of New Madrid County Central. And Class 2, Lane Ballou of Advance, and Anthony Primer of South Pemiscot, both making the first team in Class 2. Now in Class 1, Lorandus Banks of Scott County Central making first team, Logan Dyer of Eminence, Jordan Pavia Risco, Cameron Davis of Leopold, and making second team, Jeffrey Porter of Scott County Central, and Dylan White of Clarkton. And cl uh, Class 1 Coach of the Year, Frank Staples from Scott County Central. And those are the boys' all-state teams. And now to the girls in Class 4, Hannah No from Dexter making first team. And those making second team, Erica Cobb of Dexter, Annie Siebert of Notre Dame, Sydney Skaggs of Park Hills Central. And getting Class 4 Coach of the Year, Chad Allen from Dexter. And in Class 1, Michaela Blissett making the All-State team in Class 1 from Scott County Central. So those are the All-State basketball teams for both boys and girls. Those are the uh, ones from our area here in Southeast Missouri that made the team, those teams, this year. And now we're going to bring, uh, bring on Mr. All-State himself, Tommy Jacobs. And Tommy, it's good to have you with us this morning. Hey, it's been a while. How are you doing, Tommy? <laughs> oh, pretty good. And... Uh, Tommy, just to talk or just to recap, these all-state basketball teams—no surprise uh, that we see the likes of you know J.T. Jones, Kevontae Mitchell, Delfinko Bogan, Willie Jemerson, Daryl Monroe, and uh, you know numerous others in those all-state teams this year. 
Oh, that's true. There's some very good athletes in there, both on the boys and the girls' side. You know, that class three with Willie Jimerson and Bogan and Del Monroe, you know, that's a pretty good uh, three players you can build a team around that would be competitive with anyone. And, uh, you know, and, and you drop down to class two, Primer. I always like Primer. South Pemiscott plays very hard. Always like to watch you play. And Wayne Blue up at Advance, you know, my, he just a heck of a player. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, one of the main players didn't get to see this year. We uh, we didn't really, we didn't, I don't think we had an advanced game on the schedule this year. We easily uh, catch them in the Stoddard County, uh, Stoddard County tournament, but uh, we didn't, we didn't have them on the schedule this year. He was probably one of the main players that didn't get to see this year. Had a stellar season up around, what, 30 points a game or more. And, I think that's it. Yeah, really had a good year there, Lane Blue in advance. So probably one of the main players didn't get to see this year, but certainly uh, you take a look at these players, Kevontae Mitchell, J.T. Jones, Del Finko Bogan, and Willie Jemerson, certainly headlining the CMO Conference over the past couple of years, and this year was no different. And, and uh, the only sad thing was Kevontae Mitchell going down with that hand injury there at the end of the year. Exactly. That, uh... Uh, that young man was he's just a tremendous athlete and I guess one of the best baseball players that are around. And I, if my understanding right, he's going to play baseball. Simo, is that what you heard? I, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that, uh, Tommy. Can't speak for that uh, as of certain, but certainly he's going to have a great opportunity uh, at the next level, uh, certainly. So uh, whether he well, wants to play that, that basketball, be, baseball, uh, or both. But I did hear that somewhere, but it could not be right. But he, wherever he goes, he plays whatever he plays. He's going to be a that set. Certainly, certainly. So, uh, you know, you know, you look, you take a look at Class Four over on the girls' side. Tommy uh, Dexter's Hannah No gets first team All State. Erica Cobb gets second team All State, and even Chad Allen, the Coach of the Year for Class Four. So, uh, you know, we've been talking about the Dexter girls basketball team uh, with their stellar season, but it, it just kind of caps it off with those All State honors and Chad Allen being Coach of the Year in Class Four. And you know what? The players making all state and Coach Allen being named the coach of the year. Uh, you know, where else could it go? Those people really deserve that. I love to watch the Dexter girls play. Coach Allen knows his business. Those kids play tremendously. You know, I had Paige Patterson in there, and, and she was a very good post player. And, and all the other players that come in from Dexter girls, you know, just gave it all they had. And, you know, anytime you run up against Incarnate Warren, anybody's going to struggle. But I thought Dexter played them very well this year. They certainly did. And uh, just basically putting a cap on the, the basketball season as uh, we see quite a few Class 1 players. If we can bring that class, uh, the Class 1 boys graphic up again, quite a few making the All-State team in Class 1 this year. And I think uh, the player of the year when it comes to the small schools was Lorandis Banks this year for Scott County Central. What a heck of a player and a season he had this year. And you include Logan Dyer of Eminence. Jordan Pavey of Risco, Cameron Davis of Leopold, Jeffrey Porter of Scott County Central, and Dylan White of Clarkton. Clarkton getting oh, a player yeah. in there, Tommy. Tell you what, this Dylan White's a player. Now, we watched him play two or three times, Tyler, and, and uh, he was a player here to watch. And that little Clarkton team, you know, they uh, ran up against the Scott County Central, and I guess a sectional game, or, and they were just a tremendous team, and uh, Coach Ferguson did a very good job with them. And speaking of Coach Ferguson, you know, moving to Haytown next year, he'll do a good job down there. I'm not sure what I, I've heard different things about the Clarkson job. If what I hear is true, I hear that uh, that Coach Eve may be the coach down there. He's principal there now, and he's going to have a core of a good team. So you might watch out for that Clarkson Reindeer team this year. Yeah, uh, let's transition into that, Tommy. Now as we're, you know, about this time of the year, we see some coaching changes as the school boards meet for the next school year to make their staffing uh, changes. And that was one big development over the past uh, week or two that Dustin Ferguson, first-year coach there at Clarkton, is going to go down to Haytai to take the Haytai coaching position. And uh, certainly a great season for Clarkton. And now Dustin will go down to Haytai, which, you know, pretty good program in itself they've been very talented over the years so that was one big development over the past few weeks That's exactly right you know you and i've talked many times i've always said this year in year out hey Ty has as much talent as anyone around and if someone go in there you know bridle that talent you know they could be a contender year after year certainly and uh i get you know when it comes to coaching you you know it's uh 
it's all about timing and Dustin Ferguson having that great year with Clarkton. You know, it just makes him look that even that much more impressive as his first year as head coach. So I guess he just struck it when it's hot, and it's all about timing, and he certainly timed it right. Sure did. And, you know, hey, Ty's getting not only a good coach, they get a fine young man in Dustin Ferguson. You know, I've always liked Dustin, watched him play some high school ball, and we wish him nothing but the best at hey, Ty. Sure. And that, you know, like you said, that opens up Clarkton. And you've got David Heap right there already in the school system there as, uh, I think, principal there uh, with the Clarkton Reindeer. And, you know, that, that, that that's the easy choice, you know, just to move David Heap right there into the Clarkton coaching position. But I'm, cert- I'm sure they'll probably uh, probably take some names, see if, if they can get anybody interested in that position and open it up to see who they can, you know, possibly interview for that. But, uh, you know, that, that would be – uh, the easiest choice there with David Heap already there in the school system. And, you know, he's already proved that he's one heck of a coach over the years. So uh, it, probably worst-case scenario, they'll have David Heap. So, you know, that's, that's not that's not a bad place to be. Well, you're exactly right. He, but he's been down the road a few times with that basketball. He knows what he's doing. It wouldn't be a hard decision for me if I had anything to do with it. I'd say, Mr. Principal, welcome to the, back to coaching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he, I'm sure, he, uh, I'm sure he wouldn't have any problem with that. You know, he's he's a junkie, but you know what you call a basketball junkie. And I'm sure he, it wouldn't have been long before he was back into the coaching profession. I just don't see him staying away from it that long. I think you're exactly right. You know, you and I did that game between Clarkton and Listo, that district final, and, and he was standing on the floor right below us where we were broadcasting and he was, was really doing some coaches from over there. You know, I don't think the players paying much attention to it because it was to Coach Ferguson, but boy, he was into it. Yeah, yeah it's uh, certainly a big game that we did this year at Risk and Clarkton District Final. Uh, one of the games of the year, certainly, that we did here on YHC. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> The reclassification of a lot of schools in here, you know, A type Portageville and Cena's going to class three and uh, going into district one and Charleston moving to district two along with the Scott City and East Prairie. So that that's gonna be a little different, you know. Uh, Coach Ferguson's gonna be up there contending with these uh Madrid County for the district and, and Marlin. Marlin should be a little better this year. Pretty good team last year. I think they'll be in uh, contention, but uh, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, uh, I'm certainly you know certainly those class two teams that are moving up, as you said, Hey Ty, seeing the Hornersville and Portageville, uh, probably not <laughs> not too happy about that move up. Which Portageville is the only team that's really experienced class three in the past decade. You know, they're in the mid 2000s. They spent a couple of years up there in class three. And uh, it's certainly a big step from two to three, uh, but uh, exactly. you know it's it's just the way the the you know the dice lay when it comes to those reclassifications and the we you know there's some significant ones there, Tommy, with class one and class two, Scott County Central moving up to class two and Oran and Advance moving down from two to one. So, oh yeah, that, uh, I'm sure. Know, that, it's class two is going to have to continue that Scott County Central bunch. We know how they can play. I think they can play on about any level year in, year out, and be you know, a bit competitive. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, uh, you would you know the class one teams you know seeing Scott County move out, but then they add Oran and Advance, which have been very competitive over the years. Exactly. So uh, they I don't know if they it, it might be just a a wash, uh, you know, seeing Scott County leave, but two of the, you know, finer class two teams in there, you move back down to class one. So uh, some some very interesting changes, certainly with those reclassifications. And we'll see how they play out this next year. A little different landscape, especially there in class three, as you see, you know, Haytai and Seen Hornersville and uh, Portageville there in class three. And, of course, uh, uh, as you said, Charleston moving to district two. So district one going to be opened up a little bit. Now that Charleston's moved it to District Two, and no matter County Central, you got to look at them. This, you know, if, you know they don't have to go up against Charleston, and uh, Crowdersville is going to be probably down a little bit, losing Daryl Monroe among a couple other players. Scott County Central and Willie Jemerson in that bunch. You got to think that you know this is their year to, to make it through in that Class Three district. But you know, lots a lot's got to be played out. But going into next year, you think that uh, th- this is their chance to break through. I think you're exactly right, and uh, you know, Coach Day and his new manager Kevin Eagles, they're going to be ready. And you know, before we leave the subject, you know, I hear that uh, Hawkins' coach Walk is going to Buxico next year. 
for really. Yeah, I, I did. And I did. Also, I want to say, you know, Coach Nichols at Dexter has re, resigned his coaching position. You know, I, I want to wish him a lot of luck. I, I think that's one fine young man, and and whatever he decides to do, he will he will be successful at it. And and you know, uh, I like Rob Nichols. I think he's a fine asset to any school town. And so whatever he decides to do, I wish him a lot of luck. At that. Sure. Yeah, Rob Nichols, uh, fine guy, and truly. He's always been around for quite a few years. He's been uh, Dexter for seven years now, so we'll see how that develops going forward. Uh, not sure who they're looking at at that position at this time, but I'm sure they'll probably be making that decision quickly. And we'll probably see quite a few changes here in the next probably week or so. Uh, as you see there, I didn't know uh, Walk went to Puxico. I knew the Puxico position was open, uh, but I wasn't sure that it was filled by Walk. So that's uh, certainly a development this past week. As well, I think he'll do a good job up there. Do a good job at Alcom. I think he'll do a good job at Puxico. Yeah. Um, Tommy, the Southeast Missourian reported this week that Lucas Nutt will be taking the head coaching position at Zenith Hornersville for this next year. So that's a development this week as well in the coaching ranks. And Lucas Nutt, the son of uh, current Southeast Missouri State basketball coach Dickie Nutt. So. Uh, Lucas Nutt moving on down to Cena Hornersville's coach. That's quite an asset uh, for Cena. You know, they've got some pretty young players. You know, uh, we talked about Coach Heeb a while ago. You know, he was down there when some of these players of the year before last and did a fine job. And he had some freshmen, that probably juniors this year. And I think they will, uh, he could probably put a competitive team together. And he's going to have to to compete with the, with the players in Class 3. Sure. So... You know, seeing Hornersville is one of those teams that we saw, you know, really come on come on board with David Heave a couple years ago. They didn't fare as well this year, but certainly some young talent that's going to be there to work with there at seeing Hornersville. Exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, Tommy, uh, take a look at these spring sports. Have you got out and uh, seen any spring sports this, this year? I have, uh, Tyler. I've been there a few times. I have a great nephew who plays baseball for Holcomb, uh, Hunter Swafford, and, and Hunter's a senior down there. And I've watched three or four of their games in that Class 2. That Class 2, District 1, what a competitive district that is with Camel, Haytow, Holcomb, South Penn, Portageville, and Cena. And, you know, Holcomb's lost about three to four games, one to nothing. And, Holcomb has a tremendous little pitching staff, and you know, they, uh, you get beat one to nothing, you know, a timely hit, a timely there, you win that ball game. But, you know, as you spoke earlier, Portageville's got a nice team, and they beat Holcomb one to nothing, and uh, Holcomb hadn't played seen it yet, and I think, I don't know about the South Pim game, can't remember, went over the other day and watched Camel beat Holcomb one to nothing. So, and I've been out and watched several in the some good good baseball around and if Hawkins going to repeat is uh, to make that trip to play in the championship this year they're going to have to get by some really good teams just out of their district yeah and that you talk about that district but the, up the way in the neighboring districts Chaffee the number one ranked team in the state in class two currently and Portageville got a narrow victory over them and that's you know like I said earlier Portageville is one of those teams to look out for and you got to include them in the bunch as well in, in the class two here in this area. That's exactly right. And, and you know, in class three, you got Bernie. Man, Bernie's, they're on his fire at me. And, and by the way, Holcomb and Bernie are going to play at the uh, AutoZone uh, down, in Ken or down in Memphis Thursday, May the 1st. So that should be pretty good. They play after the Redbird game around 3 or 4 o'clock. So uh, that could be interesting. Sure. And what it's going to be hard to tell who's going to come out of that class too. It's, you know, it's it's going to come down to the pitching staffs and what they're going to be able to do with their pitching staff. You know, one through three or four, uh, whoever brings the best pitching. You know, and that and that's what's hard to to really gauge how good high school baseball teams certainly are because you know you'll see it, you'll see a team. Uh, You'll see maybe considered a mediocre team beat a really good team one day, and then the next day they meet, you know, maybe a team they're better than lose. But it all just depends on the pitching matchups. You know, it's really hard to gauge how good these teams are, but we'll certainly find out once it comes to district time who's got, uh, you know, the complete team because that's what it certainly comes down to is, you know, who's got the deeper pitching staff and who's able to, to, to 
hit timely, uh, get timely right. hits, and you know, baseball a little different game. It sure is. You know, like you said, I watched you all ago when you were telling the scores of some of the games that were played earlier, and it's just according who's got their main ace going on today. Well, they may have theirs on the mound, but well, the team they're playing may have their third or fourth pitcher, and so they get beat pretty good. But you know, any given day, it's who is on the mound for any of these small towns. Yeah. And uh, who's got the sticks going too? You know, you got to be, exactly right. yeah, get the, got to have the hitting going. So uh, that's that's one thing about baseball. You know, you got to keep it, keep engaged because you'll see these teams kind of uh, jockey their way up and down uh, depending on depending on the day and who's matched up. So uh, that's exactly right. And, and like I say, Hawkeye uh, games I watched them have hit the ball hard at times that could make a difference in the game right at somebody. As the old saying goes, baseball's a game of inches. Boy, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah, Poplar Bluff, Tommy. Uh, yeah. Poplar Bluff baseball team undefeated, making a very strong year so far. So that's certainly one of the larger schools to look at. And, you know, certainly Sykeston and um, Notre Dame there in the mix there in Class 4. But Kennett's starting to start to play to their potential as well. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so that's going to be, you know, all these teams, it's all coming down to the wire, like you say. It's about time for school to start thinking about closing down all these district games coming together. It's going to be interesting next few weeks. Yep. And uh, tell me, have you gotten to see track and field? I haven't, haven't been able to, to see any myself this year. I know you try to keep up with it sometimes. Have you seen any track and field this year? I really haven't. I, I have been busy and just haven't had a chance to get around and watch it. And I, I try to see the finals and I enjoy track and field and I, but I really don't have anything to, to report on that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, we spoke about this last week when we had uh, Travis Quaternis on talk about these uh, certainly you see a lot of uh, football players play track and participate in track and field in the spring and uh, I certainly like to to see these sprinters match up, you know, these running backs that are, you know, got great speed in the fall. Get them on the uh, on the track on the track in the spring and seeing who can beat who in those sprints. That's one thing I really look forward to each spring. Yeah, that is interesting. I'm like you. I like to watch that too. And you know, Southeast Missouri just loaded with athletes. You know, we got you know we got some of these kids playing two to three sports, and it's a it's really a pleasure to watch these young people play. And we all need to get out and support these young people. Yep, that's uh, certainly a lot of fun. And Tommy, it's coming. Coming down to the end here in just a few weeks, we'll be wrapping up the school year and looking forward to next year. So uh, it seemed just a few weeks ago we were dealing with the ice and the snow, and now all of a sudden it's about over. Yeah, we were on the phone with each other wondering if we're going to play tonight or they're not going to play tonight, <laughs> and now it's uh, winding down. So anyway, before we get off uh, here, Tyler, Andre Jenkins out of New Madrid County Central mm -hmm. is going to be going to Italy to participate in a – uh, basketball. I guess they're going to be crewing Italy, Italy playing basketball. And boy, what a fine young man! And congratulations to Dontre Jenkins. Yeah, Dontre Jenkins, a graduate of I'm trying to think what year was that? Um, 2010, maybe. I think, I think it's it might be. That. Yeah, 2010 graduate Dontre Jenkins played football, basketball, and excelled in both of those sports. And he's uh, played up at William Woods, William Woods University, or William Woods College up in uh, Fulton and he's going to be going to be graduating this year and he's going to be the all-time assist leader for that school when it's all said and done this year and going to join a, a group to go overseas and play in Italy and playing with some athletes uh, across the country and competing basically as Team USA over in over in Italy so it's certainly a, a great opportunity for him and uh, of course he's the son of Donnie Jenkins there in Malden you're good buddies with and I'm sure Donnie's pretty pretty excited as well oh that's exactly right I talked to Donnie about it he is very excited and, and if you, anyone doesn't know Don Trey Jenkins he's just one fine young man and, and that, that goes back to with his parents what's his leadership at the school system over in New Madrid, Coach Day. Hey, you say something about Don Trey Jenkins, Coach Day, and you can almost see him tear up. He said, I wish I had five Don Trey Jenkins because he's a coach on the floor. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Don Trey takes that flexibility. You know, Don Jenkins is not a bad basketball player in his time. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> he, he, was a pretty, he knew a little bit about, the, about basketball. He was, a, you know, it's kind of like a, down in here, you say something about a Jenkins, you know, you just expect him to be a good athlete. Because Donnie played sometimes three sports, all the time two sports. It's kind of like an Ison. You think of an Ison, you think of a basketball player. You don't play, it's just a name. Kind of like a Blitzen yeah. or people are Porter, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, certainly that is the case. 85 state champ, uh, Donnie Jenkins. Oh, yeah. Donnie, Donnie reminds me of that a lot. And, yeah. Well, that was a team. Yeah, I remember watching that team with Ice and Pugh and Donnie Jenkins, and just to name a few. And very fun to watch. But, you know, we're loaded down here. Always have been, always will be. Yeah. In the southeast Missouri area. Yep. Uh, I hear stories about that team. and. Uh, certainly a Bill Hampton who will tell you quite a few of those as well. <laughs> <laughs> so. And you know what? Back in 1980, when they won that in 85, there was also some very good, other very good teams out here, like New Madrid County Central, that they split with during the year, and I think only beat them by one point in the district. Yeah. yeah it was uh, certainly uh, t uh, tough teams there in the 80s. There were Charleston, New Madrid, and, and Malden. It was. Uh, certainly, they dominated the scene there in Class 3A, certainly. But anyway, I wanted to say something about Don Trail. I yep. wish him a lot of luck. And I understand that after he gets back, he's going to go back and finish his degree and try to go into the coaching. And if, boy, it'd be good to get a young man like Don Trey Jenkins back in Southeast Missouri coaching basketball or football. Yeah, he's wanting to, to go, go into coaching and I got to talk to him a couple of years ago and he, 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 he said he wanted to get into coaching. He'll certainly uh, be good at it. He's, he's, he puts a lot of time into it, a lot of preparation, and I'm sure he'll he'll do well at the next level. Just hopefully he'll be able to stay here in, in the southeast Missouri area. So that'll, that'll be, certainly be great. I hope so. He'll take his alongside a lot of good young coaches that we're all so blessed with down here. Yeah. Hey, Tommy, before you go, uh, and I'll get into this with our viewers here in just a moment, uh, you know, next week we're going to show during the roundtable. I'm going to be out of town next weekend. And uh, during the during the roundtable hour, we're going to show the 1974 basketball state championship, and that was uh, I guess you would say the the class S, I guess the small, I guess there was or small or medium, I'm not exactly sure, but it's the 1974 state title game, Lilburn versus Nixa, and we're going to show the entire game, uh, the Lilburn Panthers winning that state championship back in '74, and uh, we we had Larry Warren who's lives here in the Dexter area, coached that team back in 74. We had him on last spring to talk about it, showed some footage, and we've got the whole game, and we're going to show that next week. And uh, what how this came about, uh, the, the, the 1974 team had a reunion a couple weeks ago, and Larry uh, was involved in that, and uh, I got, got the, the game footage, got the whole game, and uh, he took it over and showed it. You know, showed it at that reunion. So the 74 championship team, the Lilburn Panthers, got together uh, this, I think, two weeks ago and celebrated, and we got our hands on that footage to show the full game. So we're going to show that full game on next week's roundtable, and uh, it's going to be fun to watch. And the uh, Lilburn Panthers oh, yeah. 74 state championship team. Oh, that'll be great. I look forward to that. Uh, that, that is great. I watched uh, Coach Warren when he was on your show. Enjoyed that tremendously. Yeah, and uh, you know it's just fortunate that we've got that footage available from mid '70s. So uh, I got something else for you if you want to show it sometime. There is some uh, uh, footage floating around here of uh, the Marlins '85 state championship game. Really? Yeah, yeah. Get, get your hands on that, and uh, we'll certainly show that. That'd be great. You bet. I sure will. I'll I'll run that down for you. Yep, yeah, run it down, and we'll we'll get it on. So. <laughs> Tommy, we appreciate you spending some time with us this morning. And I know you're out and busy, and what you got some yard work to do or something. You're. That's right. I have to. <laughs> I'm gonna get yard of the month. This subdivision I live in out here. I'm gonna have to get out and do some hustling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you for having me. 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 Yep, we appreciate you spending time with us, and we'll see you down the road. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. And that's our good friend Tommy Jacobs. Uh, certainly spends a lot of time with us over the sports season, helping us out with our broadcasts and such, and appreciate him spending some time with us. He's always uh, 
finding out something out there. He's always got something to contribute. So we appreciate his time with us this morning. As I mentioned to Tommy, next week I'm going to be out of town. So we're going to have a treat for you next week. For next week's roundtable, we're going to have the 1974 state championship game. And, and that time it was, uh, they had three classes, small, medium, and large. And I'm thinking this one was either the small or medium. I'm not really sure. I can't recall if it was the small or medium division. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to show that 1974 boys state championship game, Lilburn versus Nixa. And we're going to have that. And it's about a 50-minute game. It, we, there's no, you know, uh, it's basically all action. We don't, it doesn't show any timeouts. There's no dead action. It's from uh, all the time of play in that state championship game. So that's going to be our hour next week for the sports roundtable, the Liburn and Nixa state championship game from 1974. And this team won two years in a row, 74 and 75, but this is the 74 game. And very fun, very fun to watch. It was in the Hearn Center, and I think that was maybe the second or third season or the second or third year that the Hearn Center was open in Columbia and uh, going back some time uh, for that state championship. So uh, certainly thought of one of the, the best teams in Southeast, not only Southeast Missouri, but in the state, that Liberty State Championship team there in 74 and 75. A lot of great talent on that team. And we're going to show that for next week's roundtable and the roundtable replays as well. So that's a treat to look forward to for next week. And that's all we've got for you for today's show. And we appreciate you for tuning in as always. Look forward to having you back with us next week for that, that uh, state championship game. We're going to be out of town next week, so it'll probably be two weeks before we'll have another live show here in our studio. And uh, like I said, just a few more shows remaining for this roundtable season. So hopefully you'll join us for the rest of the way and have yourself a great week. Take care.